give a right big round of applause everybody here. A couple of people who've organised today's demonstration for us. Thank you, Jeff Duncan and Anne McMillan. Well done. There's two people in one person. Thanks very much. Friends, I'll bring you the greetings from the Scottish Socialist Party. Proud to be part of this wonderful Yes Scotland movement. On target to deliver an almighty Yes vote for independence next year. And as I stand here in front of you, advocating the case for an independent socialist Scotland, I feel the hand of history at our shoulders. Because it's maybe because, you see across the road there in Carlton Cemetery, there's an obelisk. You see that great big needle that's there? That's a monument to Thomas Muir and the United Scotsman from the time of Robert Burns, who like us demanded justice for ordinary people, betrayed by financiers, and the right to elect our own representatives and have our own government in this country. Sound familiar? And adjacent to that obelisk, just next to me here, what used to be Carlton Jail, where the great John McLean, the Red Clyde side leader, was incarcerated a hundred years ago for opposing the exploitation of British capitalism and the warmongering blood lost this within it. And no one is surely going to deny here among us today that the spirit of John McLean stands here beside us, beside every single one of us too. Because the great John McLean called for an independent Scotland, one where we the people were sovereign, one where we the people were free from the oppression of the city of London, free from the political interference of Westminster, and free from the class-ridden British monarchy. And it was here on this very spot that you're standing in, November, October the 9th, 2004, that the Scottish Socialist Party and others organised the famous Declaration of Carlton Hill, calling for a modern democratic republic for Scotland. And it was in the same day that the Queen was beneath us, opening the new Scottish Parliament at Holyrood. But friends, it's not history that drives my passion for independence most of all. It's the knowledge that Scotland's huge working class majority will be better off with independence. And I'll tell you, I can see the future from here at the top of Carlton Hill. It's a future that's sharp and clear. It's a future with an independent Scotland coming yet for all that. It's a Scotland where no one is left behind. It's a Scotland where the riches of this country are shared out equally. It's a Scotland without the hated bedroom tax. Yeah. It's a Scotland without the hated anti-trade union laws, the worst in Europe. It's a Scotland with full employment and a living wage for everyone, not zero-hour contracts and poverty pay. And it's a Scotland where our public services like the Royal Mail and our gas and electricity industry are publicly owned by the people of Scotland for the benefit of the people of Scotland. And it's a Scotland where we the people are sovereign and elect our head of state. It's a Scotland admired the world over for the way it treats the vulnerable and offers shelter and freedom to those fleeing from persecution abroad. And to all Scotland today, let this question ring out from the top of Carlton Hill. Now isn't that a vision worth voting for in September next year? Yes! 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, shall we? I'm 20 minutes.